In the long lost landscapes of prehistoric Europe, one of the smallest dinosaurs discovered zipped around in search of food. Meet Compsognathus. Now, despite its popularity as a dinosaur now, Compies were actually considered to be large lizards when the first fossils were discovered in 1859 in the German limestone deposits in Bavaria. This specimen was one of the most complete dinosaur remains at the time, and were part of the fossil collections belonging to Joseph Oberndorfer, a physician and fossil collector. Since he wasn't a professional in the industry of paleontology, he gave the fossils to paleontologist Johann Wagner, who then analyzed the discovery and coined the term compsognathus, which means elegant jaw in Greek. This name was most likely due to how well preserved the jaw was along with its shape. Compsognathus was then studied by numerous paleontologists, including Othniel Marsh, the second side to the Bone Wars. It wasn't until much later in 1951 when a second specimen was found, being much larger than the holotype and having an oddly shaped hand it was considered a different species. I'll talk more on its oddly shaped hand later. Afterwards, many paleontologists agreed that it was most likely a different growth stage of the original species, making the holotype a juvenile. It was just from these two discoveries that we got what we know today about Compsognathus. It goes to show how much value a well-preserved dinosaur can have. Now you would think that an animal as little as Compsognathus, with only two specimens to date, wouldn't contain so much information about its biology. However, the place the fossils were buried in made all the difference. The limestone that the first compi was found in is also known as the Sonolfen limestone, one of the most famous fossil dig sites. Known for its amazing preservation of even the most delicate of fossils, the information we were able to gather from one Compsognathus discovery rivals what we could find from several specimens of any other dinosaur. Compies were the smallest dinosaur at the time of their discovery, about the size of a turkey. But what's even tinier than Compsognathus is the prices at Timu, a sponsor of the channel. By clicking the link below, you'll find yourself with thousands of amazing deals on a variety of items. This includes dinosaur posters, clothing, and even authentic fossils to add to your collection. The prices you'll find on Timu are unlike any other with deals such as free shipping, coupons, and gift boxes available nearly every time you open in the app or log into Timu's website. So start saving on some awesome dino gear, click the link below and have the chance to win a $100 coupon bundle, or click the individual product links to save on hand-picked dino deals by yours truly. Now without further ado, let's get back into this month's prehistoric animal. Compsognathus was a carnivorous theropod with classic three-fingered hands and no toe claw like the more famous Velociraptor. Its skull stands out as having a large eye socket in proportion to the skull, which suggests that it was a visually oriented predator that may have reacted more to the movement of prey. This would have required fast reflexes to stop prey from escaping. The long neck of Compsognathus meant that it could quickly move its head to the sides without moving its body. It would also be able to work its head into undergrowth and pull out prey that it was using it for cover. Its teeth were quite small, designed to eat small animals like lizards and insects. In fact, the fossils of what was in its stomach was actually found in the holotype. Originally thought to have been an embryo, we now know the fossil belongs to a lizard the animal ate before dying. Given the completeness of the lizard, it's also thought that Compsognathus ate smaller prey whole. Because of its diet, compies would have been extremely fast. Some scientists estimated their speed to be nearly 40 miles per hour, but realistically it was probably closer to 30 or 35. The question of if Compsognathus had feathers has been asked by many for decades, but currently we have no direct evidence. Similar dinosaurs in China, such as Sinusoropteryx, show a covering of fuzz, enough to provide insulation as well as possibly serve as display. The discovery of Giravenator, also from Germany, was initially claimed as a relative to Compsognathus that seemed to confirm a lack of fuzz as evidenced by a skin impression. However, a review of Giravenator in 2010 revealed a very light covering of some kind of fuzz in the skin impressions that are visible under ultraviolet light. These evidences lead to the suggestion that it's at least possible that Compsognathus had fuzz of some sort, which may one day be confirmed or denied from more discoveries. 
Now I said I would talk more about the French Compi's oddly shaped hand, so hold on to your butts and get ready, because when the fossils were first discovered, Alain Bedard, who suggested the specimen belonged to a different species, proposed an idea so outlandish that it was shot down nearly as quickly as it shot up in popularity. Bedar thought that the Compi's hand was actually a flipper of sorts, allowing it to be a semi-aquatic predator. Now this wasn't completely without merit, as it was based on alleged fossil impressions of wrinkles running parallel to the forelimb. This idea was debunked by paleontologist John Ostrom, who noted that the wrinkles were simply just part of the sediment and weren't connected to Compi's at all. The environment Compsognathus lived in was similar to the Galapagos Islands, with a very tropical climate and a group of islands surrounded by the ancient Tethys Sea. Both the German and French areas where Compsognathus specimens had been preserved were lagoons in between the beaches and coral reefs of these islands. Compies also lived among some very unique animals of its time. These included the bird-like Archaeopteryx, the small pterosaur Ramphorhynchus, the crocodile-like Dacosaurus, and several species of lizards, crocodilians, turtles, and insects. As for the media Compsognathus has been featured in, it's widely known for its appearance in Jurassic Park 2. Since then, it's appeared in various other media in the Jurassic Park franchise, be it shows, games, and other films. Well, that's it for July's Prehistoric Animal. As always, put your Prehistoric Animal requests in the comments, check out the merch in the description for some cool dino gear, and check out the Discord to hang out with some fellow dino lovers. And as always, keep your pencils sharp.